class. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of a lecture today on thesis statements and I just went over your individual thesis statements and tried to make some detailed comments on how you could fix those and I also identified probably four common problems with the thesis statements so it's really important that you go and take a look at your own comments um, but also then take into consideration some of the stuff I'm going to tell you here about fixing them and I've got some little visual aids to help me um, the thesis is the foundation for the paper. Knowing what you're going to argue, what you're going to write about, helps you take everything else in the direction that you want it to go and helps your paper stay on track. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the thesis is really important and why I keep hammering it in. And it's not just because that one statement has to be perfect. It's really that it represents what's going to happen in the rest of your paper. So when I look at it, I kind of get an idea. This is what you're going to talk about. Are you going in the right direction? And sometimes that's not necessarily true. Sometimes if your thesis is, say, vague, you do end up making a more cohesive, more focused and pointed argument later in the paper. Um, but I'll talk about why it's important in academic writing sometimes to have that up front. Okay, so these are sort of four main problems, some examples of what the problem looks like and some suggestions and solutions for how to fix it. So the problem, the first problem with thesis statements is that your thesis makes no claim. Okay, an example of that I'm going to talk about women's roles in The Handmaid's Tale. Okay? So, I mean, if I say that, <coughs> right, you're thinking, how could I possibly argue that you're going to talk about that? And what are you going to say about it? <coughs> Excuse me. So sometimes there's some overlap with these problems because that's also obviously very vague. Um, so let's take a look here at some of the solutions. The first solution is to take yourself out of it. At this point in the semester, you should probably not be using much of the first person point of view, I. You shouldn't be using you at all, um, and you should probably be eliminating I. So you yourself are a representative of readers in general, and that's how, or critics in general, and that's how I want you to think of yourselves as you're working on your paper. Um, this isn't about what I think, although when you're constructing a thesis, usually if you start out thinking, you know, I think or I believe, but then take yourself out of it and pose it as an argument. The other way to check if you're having this problem with your thesis is to ask yourself, could someone disagree? Could, so if I say what I had on here, which was, I'm going to talk about women's roles in The Handmaid's Tale, could someone disagree with that? No, that's what you're going to talk about, unless it's not what you're going to talk about, and then that's just kind of strange, right? Um, and this is a good question to ask yourself to test any thesis statement. Could someone disagree with me? If not, you're probably on your own, the wrong track. And it's not as obvious with literary analysis, right, as it would be if you were making an argument about, you know, genetic testing or genetic engineering or um, stem cell research or something, where it would be obvious that there are different points of view. But there are definitely different points of view also in literary studies, different readings of the text, different readers. So you're looking at yourself as a um, representative of that. I've got all my little thingies out of order here. Okay, so we're here on problem number two, and this is that maybe your thesis makes a comparison, but it's still not making a claim. So this is a little bit more complex, um, but it's still not making the argument that you need to be making, okay? So an example of that would be many similarities exist between the women in Gilead and those in Iran. Okay, so a lot of thesis statements like this out there um, on all different sorts of topics. But if you're just saying, if all you're claiming is that doing this research, finding out this context helps you understand um, Atwood, then my question for you, in no way meant to be mean, but a question that I've seen on many of my papers throughout my academic career is this. So what? So what if knowing about totalitarianism or women's roles in the Middle East or the feminist movement in the United States helps you understand 
Atwood. How? How does it help you understand Atwood? What did you learn? Okay, so you got to ask yourself, so what, about your thesis. See if it applies. Okay, so the solution to this begins with evaluating the obviousness of your claim. Okay, so if I'm claiming that there are similarities between women in the Middle East and the women in the fictional Republic of Gilead in Margaret, At Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, I've got to ask myself if that's an obvious claim, and what do I need to add to it to make it less obvious? Another question to ask is, does my claim lack stakes? And this is another way of asking, is it arguable? Could somebody argue against me? Um, does it matter that they might be similar? Well, maybe it matters if what you're trying to say is that Atwood is warning us, or that Atwood is telling us that if we continue in this line, particular line of behavior, whatever that might be, that we're going to end up in a society just like the Republic of Gilead. If it's a warning, which it probably is, right, because it's a satire, and satires are usually warnings, um, that it, you know, might, that might have stakes, right? Obviously, she thinks it has stakes. That's why she wrote about it. So these are my other solutions. There's actually more than just one on here. But one is to ask probing questions, and that's what I do when I'm commenting on your thesis statement, and I start asking you a bunch of questions. My intention is for you to answer those questions, and that will help you produce a stronger thesis. I'm asking you questions instead of just telling you what to write, because part of what you're learning here is to use that analytical process um, to get at the best thesis statement that you can produce from your ideas. Number two is to investigate the author's intentions. So part of what you're arguing when you're doing a literary analysis is what did this author intend? And I've got a question about this on the next little sheet here. Um, but you're trying to get at her intentions even though you can't read her mind, right? And how do you get into her mind? Well, you get into her mind through the text that she produced, through The Handmaid's Tale. So the last one, engage with the text. If that means rereading chapters, note taking, getting really getting into it until you have something to say about it, something that you feel um, intensely about, that you want to make a claim about. And so the question that you're really asking here is, why does Atwood want to show this world to her reader? Because authors don't write books, you know, just because it came to them and then they just wrote it. Um, Atwood is a, uh, one of the reasons I assign her is that she's a clearly a political author. Um, she has statements to make about women's roles in society, about certain kinds of fundamentalism, about all kinds of things. And so she is asking us to think about her intentions, really, with her text. So that's what you need to be doing. Okay, problem number three. You're writing an informational research essay. So I've been warning you about this since the lecture on biographical and historical criticism, which you might want to revisit if you're having this problem. But an example about of that would be the feminist movements of the 1960s were an important part of our history. My response to that is, ack, frowny face, where's Atwood? Okay. This is a paper about Margaret Atwood's novel, The Handmaid's Tale. Um, you're, whatever you're researching, feminism, totalitarianism, mind control, um, polygamy, women's dress throughout history, colors, whatever, um, it is only a lens to help you better see The Handmaid's Tale, not to make an argument about that, a historical argument. And it's definitely not just to give information about that. So the solution is really to refocus on the assignment, and that means read the assignment sheet over and over and over again if necessary. If you've got questions about it, please ask them. Don't just make assumptions about what you're supposed to be writing about and then be shocked when you find out that you were writing about the wrong thing. I'm here in the office to talk to you in person or also to talk to you via email or video chat, and um, I would be happy to hear from many of you in those capacities to talk about your paper and how to make it better and have more specific and detailed discussions about the direction you're working in. Problem number four, vagueness. That says vagueness, and it's all holy like that because that's what the thesis is that's vague. Here's an example. Atwood relates in many ways to the practice of totalitarianism. My response is, 
a million questions. How, where, when, why, who? Why being the most important. I'm usually going to ask you why a lot, but here, how is also very important. And the solution, although obvious, is to be specific. And here's just a little bit of information on academic research is you may feel that being specific is just giving it all away in the first paragraph and you're trying to be mysterious and you want to lead into it later and in some types of writing that works right some types of journalistic writing however in academic research when people are practicing at it at an advanced or professional level what they're really trying to get at is um, they want to have what they're going to write about right up front because when you're when somebody else is doing their research and they want to reference your paper they're going to look at just the little summary at the beginning and maybe the first paragraph looking for a thesis hey what's this person got to say is it going to be useful when I'm doing my own research and so you want to see really what the paper is going to be about up front so just some reminders there are really three things that a thesis statement should be I've talked to you about what they shouldn't be and they should be specific many details as you can get. What is it you're going to talk about? This should be the clearest statement in your whole paper. It should be arguable. So ask those questions. It, could somebody argue against me? Does it lack stakes? And they should be claims. Okay. So here's an example of a specific arguable thesis. All right. It's pretty long. It's okay for them to be long. Margaret Atwood's society shows what happens when we take the anti-feminist injunction to value women for their reproductive capacity literally. The world that results from that dogmatism is one that no one would want to live in, whether male or female. So from this thesis you can tell. It's making a claim. No one would want to live here. Atwood is showing us what happens when we take this claim by anti-feminists that women should be valued for their reproductive capacity, for their roles as mothers, um, all these things. If we take it too literally, this is what's going to happen and none of us are going to like it. Okay, So it's making kind of a strong claim. I can see what my lens is going to be that I'm going to be looking at the anti-feminist movement. Um, so that's an example of a thesis that's making a strong arguable claim. There are many other possible thesis statements. All right, and hopefully that helped a little bit. If there are lingering questions about your thesis, I would be happy to talk to you. It's great if we can have an in-person dialogue or a dialogue, even if it's via Skype. I know most people aren't using Skype. Actually, no one this semester is using Skype, but it is a tool that's available for us to have a back and forth instead of an email, which doesn't really allow us to talk about it, chat about it. Um, but that's fine, too. If you want to send me an email with maybe a revised version of your thesis, I would be happy to look at that. Okay, so I'll talk to you soon. Good luck with your paper this week. Please let me know if you have any questions.